Hello, my name is Michaela Drain and I am the Wesley Director here at the Cameron University Wesley Foundation. And here are the announcements for this week. So we are so grateful that we got to participate in the drive through Trunk or Treat with St. Paul UMC and Duncan. I heard at the beginning that they made 300 corn dogs and we got through them. And that's just the corn dogs that we gave to the people that were trick-or-treating. There was more people in the vehicles than just the trick-or-treaters. It was a super fun event. We passed out so many cupcakes and had a great time. So next week we start our new sermon series in God's radical love. So join us in that journey every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. either in person or online. So this Thursday for lunch from noon to 1.30 here at the CE Wesley, we will be having chicken and dumplings for lunch. So come and have a bite to eat. Also on Thursday in the evening at 7.30 p.m., we will be going to Kokendorfer's Brewing Company so that we can have our discussion on instant grace with Phoebe Palmer. So if you are of age, please come and join us for a good discussion and good fun. And if you're not of age, then you can tune in to the CU Wesley podcast, and there should be a link on the screen. There will also be the link in the descriptions below. And remember to save the date for winter retreat. That's gonna be January 5th through the 7th. It should be a lot of fun. There'll be all kinds of things to do there and all kinds of nice people to meet. So that's all the announcements that I have for this week, but I thought I would take some extra time to explain the significance of today before we start our worship. So. Today in the Christian calendar is significant because it's known as All Saints Day, November 1st. Typically, we celebrate it on the Sunday following November 1st, but we're very lucky at the CU Wesley because we worship on Tuesday, and that just happens to be today. So, in the United Methodist Church, All Saints Day is a day where we set aside to remember and honor all those who have passed. It is... When we say the word saint, it's not just remembering all those who are canonized into sainthood, but it is a remembrance of all believers. And we use that term of saint in the same way when we say the Apostles' Creed. Because at one of the lines, we say that we believe in the communion of saints. And when we say that, we mean all believers, all the living and all those who have passed, they've gone on before us. That is the communion of saints, all of us. And we see it in scripture as well, in Hebrews 12, that reminds us of these same saints as clouds of witnesses that surround us and cheer us on every day. So today, during our worship service, we are going to do a few things to remember and honor those who have gone before us. And towards the end, we're going to take a time of silence and prayer to specifically honor them. And if you would like some resources to be able to celebrate the holidays upcoming with that loved one in your heart and in what you do, then please reach out to us. We have resources for grieving, especially during the holidays that we can share with you. All right, well with that, let us worship. Please bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. We seek and find you in creation, O God. In the world you have made and the people you have called. Your vulnerable, powerful lamb is our shepherd and guide, leading us to share the shelter of your abundant life. Let us recognize you here in the beauty of this evening and in its challenge. May the risen one, your shepherd lamb, lead us to act for your justice and peace so that all may drink from your springs of the water of life and find their tears of sorrow and pain wiped away. In the name of the risen one, we pray. Amen. So today our scripture comes to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2. In that passage, it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
This is a beautiful passage for us to focus on on All Saints Day, because the chapter before it highlights the accomplishments of the saints. It looks at their legacy of faith and their impact on the world, and then immediately after that, the author shifts our gaze to our own legacy of faith. The author encourages us to look at our lives by fixing our eyes on Jesus. The author says, by fixing our eyes on Jesus, we ditch the distractions because our focus determines our direction. And Jesus lived this out as he endured the pain of the cross. We see that Jesus was focused on you in that moment. In that moment when his body was in agony, when there was more torture that was impending, the pain before him. The crowds around him were mocking and he was losing blood at an alarming rate. And in that moment, he could have snapped his fingers and vanished. He could have healed all of his wounds. He could have sent lightning to decimate the murderous mob that was around him. He could have done so many things to stop what was happening, to end that pain. But there was one thing that kept him going, and that was his love for us. And as Christians, we strive to channel that focused devotion in all that we do. Because it's easier for us to know what to do and where to go when we know why we're going. That's why understanding our purpose is so powerful. So we see this lived out in the secular world as well. Have you guys ever heard of a guy named Dan Rathers? If you haven't, Google him or ask your parents, they would know. But he is one of the most prolific journalists in America. I know, it's probably strange not to hear Gary England. I think that's an Oklahoma thing. But in other places that don't have tornadoes as often, Dan Rathers was the guy, at least for the rest of the United States. He spent nearly 50 years being the lead anchor of CBS. And Dan was more than just a good journalist. He served as the face of the nation's evening news. This was in an era before everybody had the internet and could look stuff up on their own. At that time, people tuned in to the television every evening after work to sit around and hear the news of the day. This means that millions of Americans hung on to Dan's every word. Every evening, they knew his voice because the broadcast was sent across America and across the world. He helped our nation process some of the most difficult milestones, like the Nixon resignation, the Challenger explosion, 9-11, and war in the Middle East. So there might not be a television hall of fame but if there were, this guy has won tons of awards and accolades to include nearly a dozen Peabody Awards for excellence in journalism. He's like the Michael Jordan of news anchors. And when he was asked for his secret to success, he said that he keeps the same simple statement in three spots on a post-it note. He keeps one in his wallet, one in his pocket, and one on his desk. And when he read the statement out loud, it said, is what you're doing now helping the broadcast? That was his secret to success. It was just a post-it note with the same question in different spots to keep that question at the front of his mind, to remind him of who he was and what he does. We see this in the church, at those churches that always say the Apostles' Creed every week. I know, it's not just to memorize it. There's a purpose behind saying that every week. It's a reminder of 
who God is and what God does. It's a way for us to keep God at the front of our hearts so that as we walk throughout the rest of our week, it's easier for us to see and live with God. The same thing happens here. It is a practical life lesson for us. It is a way for us to understand what we're focused on. Because it's much easier to stay focused when you know who you are and what you do. It's easier for us to know our next steps when we know those things. And so far, we have analyzed our experiences, we've evaluated our values, and we've unwrapped some of our spiritual gifts. So today, we're gonna to take all of those things and wrap them all up into a simple purpose statement that we can have on us wherever we go or put somewhere to keep that purpose statement at the front of our mind so we know who we are and what we do. So it's time to put all of that together by creating an actionable and practical purpose statement. Your purpose statement is gonna be made of your experiences, so that's how you operate. It's gonna be made of your values, why you do what you do, and then finally your gifts, what you are good at. And all of these pieces point towards the purpose that God has for you. This is what you should write on your little post-it note or a piece of paper that you have at home. This will be your purpose statement. It is our goal to help people discover, develop, and deploy their purpose in life. And here at the Wesley, it all starts with putting that into writing. So here are some powerful examples of a purpose statement. I'll put those up on the screen as well. So God created me to encourage those who need encouragement. God created me to leverage creativity to help people connect with God. God created me to help people better understand scripture. God created me to travel to the ends of the earth to tell people about Jesus. And God created me to help people find healing from emotional and mental hurt. Those are just a few examples to get your mind going. Because today, you get to do the rest. You get to write your own purpose statement. So this time, if you're at home worshiping, take out a piece of paper or a journal and start writing. We're gonna write our purpose statement, build around our experiences, our values, and our spiritual gifts. And once you've written it, you're gonna make it visible to yourself. You're gonna put it somewhere that you look often. Pin it to a wall, set it as your lock screen, uh, stick it on your desk or your laptop. Write it out and then live it out. So because some of who we are and what we do is because of our loved ones, we would like to take some time to celebrate those loved ones who are no longer with us. So tonight, we are going to celebrate the cloud of witnesses that surround us and cheer us on. Tonight, we're going to have a moment of silence and then a meditation prayer to lift up the names of those loved ones who have passed away. So would you please bow your heads for a moment of silence. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands, hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands 
and those gnarled with age. Holy hands, used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hard-working saints. Whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited, they left their mark on the earth for you, for us, and for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memory of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Amen. So at this time, go in the strength of the saints of God, for you will hunger no more, you will thirst no more, and the sun will not strike you, nor any heat scorch you. And we go out to be God's people. Amen.